Hi, this is Greg Young, VP of Cybersecurity with Trend Micro. Join me and my colleague, Shannon Murphy, when we talk about two things joined together to make something really interesting. Something new, which is AI, and something that's been around a while, which is compliance. When these are melded together, it's making a topic which has got all our CISOs talking about it right now. So join us to find out why this has become such a challenge, how AI and compliance are coming together to make more work for us. Hi, folks. You've got Shannon Murphy here. Hi, I'm Greg Young. So today, Greg, I really wanted to catch up with you to talk about AI security and compliance. And I know that this is maybe not always the most exciting topic when we're talking about all of the innovation that's been happening in the space, but we know that it's absolutely critical. There's tons of activity happening around the world across industries, and it really is at the top of everyone's list as far as um, planning for the next year the, and, you know, the coming years ahead. So, you know, when we're talking about compliance, there's a few different categories that you can look at this, right? Of course, there's some external pressures coming from different industry regulators. We've seen, of course, lots of activity coming out of Europe. They're typically always the leaders when it comes to privacy, regulation, compliance, those types of frameworks. But then, speaking with security leaders over the last few months, kind of a top topic that keeps coming up is this idea of how do I write my internal AI policy? How do I get a handle on what people are using? Uh, there's so much interest happening in every single part of the business, but of course security is always sort of tasked with it. This is your job now to figure out. Well, I think starting uh, where you started with the, re the regulatory side, what's really clear about AI and compliance and regulations is that uh, security is not being thought about. It's being used in hand wavy terms. So there's tons of work being done on the ethics on, you know, preventing, uh, you know, discrimination, uh, fair use, uh, copyright, all this stuff is, is, is being done in incredible depth and discussion, but security is not being talked about on the regulatory side, except for sort of hand wavy things that say, and it should be secure, and it should be not uh, easily foolable and has have identity and that stuff. So there's this big trains of AI compliance, and that's really occupying technology, but security is kind of being left like we have in the past sometimes, like the plumbing, and I'm concerned we're going to get surprised and have regulations that don't make a lot of sense thrown at us once that have been thought through well. Right. Yeah, I know. It sort of just keeps coming back to that age-old concept of shift le left, right? Like, we need to get into the process much early, earlier so that we're not kind of getting ourselves into a world of hurt much later um, in the process. Yeah, and even in, you know, when, as I've observed inside governments, as they're wrestling with this, you know, they've got silos that are just tackling some of these other issues in, in this great depth. And the other silos who deal with things like, you know, digital infrastructure, critical infrastructure, uh, and regulations for specific verticals or industries, you know, health, take health care or energy, uh, they're not being brought into those discussions. But there's regulations coming out that are going to include some of that stuff, but nobody seems to know about it. So that's, uh, I think, the surprise that all good CISOs and security leaders need to uh, prepare themselves for and try to get as educated as possible as quickly as possible. Right, right. And then have you have you already started to see some activity from these industry regulators? How, when are you kind of thinking people should be expecting this to come down the pipe? It sounds like it's pretty fast and furious. Um, it's going to be a surprise. There's not sort of like every other regulatory environment and security we've had. There's been drafts and discussions. Like if you look at, you know, all the great work that's been done in HIPAA and the like, this has never been a big surprise, right? We've been able to prepare for it. But we're going to get stuff coming out of left field, which may or may not make sense. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's probably going to uh, come quickly because of how hypey this topic of AI is right now. That's right. And then where, like, where are you seeing the intersection between the, the regulatory kind of compliance side of things and then the security side of things? Like, w will these overlap in ways that are really complementary? Are there areas where one may break the other? Um, what, what should people be anticipating, I guess, as this is coming down the pipe? I think we're going to see two kinds of directions, and there'll be a, like an upside-down bell curve of regulations that are so general that they're meaningless. Like, yeah. frankly, that's what I think the, we're seeing in the EU uh, AI Act, that's Section 15. It's just very general. Like, it will be secure. It will not do bad things, and you will have identities. Uh, it's, it's a little more than that, but there's nothing really prescriptive there, and there's no directives you can really respond to. Where, and in the other case, I've seen where they're going to be prescribing really tactical things, which 
don't make a lot of sense and they haven't thought through. Again, it's somebody dealing with a, you know, AI ethics. Well, yeah, we're going to you know, tell them to do cryptography or something, but the, the practical applications of that are going to have great impacts if, if they're worded as some of the wording has sort of been hinted at so far. So I think it's, we're going to see either end of the spectrum, no direction, uh, which is bad and good, and tactical direction that you can't comply with. Uh, there's going to be some in the middle, but the stuff we've seen so far is on both ends of that spectrum. Yeah, what I anticipate for sure is there's going to be many, many revisions before we get to a place that's secure, that's realistic, implementable, um, that actually maybe has some teeth if you are being not compliant, that will have some material fines or those types of actions. But I think that it's, it's probably a long time until we get there. Yeah. I'm more skeptical. <laughs> I think we're going to see stuff uh, that's going to come fast and be silly. Uh, um, and then it's going to back off. As you, so as you correctly mentioned, I think it's going to be backed off from. But I think there's going to be a lot of drama uh, when some of these rules come out. And it's going to be really different jurisdictions, too. I think we're going to see state-level stuff, federal stuff, mm. uh, vertical-level stuff. Uh, I think the vertical-level stuff coming out from the industry side, if an industry has a big role in it, it's going to be fine. Whereas the stuff coming out from, you know, just within government with little consultation like we've seen, that's going to be, uh, that's going to be crazy. Yeah. And then there's almost two sides of this coin as well from an external perspective, because on one hand, we're looking at, OK, how are you going to be uh, implementing and using AI in your business? And how does that impact the types of data that are you that you're maybe pulling from that you're using, that you're prompting with? And then on the other side, if you're actually building an application, if you're actually building something that your customers would be using, that's like a whole other <laughs> Um, list of considerations as well. Like I know even in Brazil recently for uh, social media networking uh, companies, they said you, you can't be training data based off of people's content anymore. Same with we've been publishing this AI Pulse and um, in, in this upcoming edition in July, something that we talked about is that some a AI companies are calling data, many people call their life's work, right? So if that's artists or journalists or coders who are posting open source communities, uh, all sorts of implications. If you're using that for the app that you're going to be delivering to your customers, there's, there's going to be rules. <laughs> Probably to your point, uh, different rules depending on your geography or industry uh, and how you intend to use it. That, that's really great that, you know, I think you mentioned that about the, the geography, the, you know, is it inside only? Does it involve customers or third parties? Um, I think we know that that's all going to be involved now, but the rate of AI rollout, you definitely, I think it's interesting too that a lot of the regulations right now, the bills coming out, for this example, a bill came out last week out of the Senate uh, for AI and it was going to push everything in the civil realm. So instead of criminal or regulatory penalties, giving a boost to saying, hey, you can sue these people easier based on this legislation. So they're almost punting it to the, to the civil side for if you're wronged rather than sort of the... Uh, the, the criminal or, or regulatory hammer. Yep, I think I can see why for sure, uh, because I think that these suits are gonna be popping up left, right, and center. So, so that's one side of it. Of course, as all of this external pressure uh, is being put on to organizations, uh, at the same time, companies are trying to figure out their own internal policies, right? How, what are our best practices? And I think a lot of those regulations will inform those policies, but they're not completely here yet, but the technology is. <laughs> uh, so they absolutely need to be uh, developing internal guidance, internal policy frameworks. Um, what kind of trends are you seeing? What kind of conversations have you been having on this topic? Well, I think it's a great tip that you ever have to run a panel or, or a round table, just ask about AI policy internally. And that's gonna, you're gonna lose an hour right there, just eat up that time as everybody's really excited about this. Very few organizations have it, I've found. I'm really surprised, I thought more would have jumped on it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a real mix right now that very few have a really well-developed policy, but a lot have it under development. Even some of the, the biggest companies in the world right now are still wrestling with this, so. This has, been, this has been my experience as well. I think everyone is very much in an exploratory phase. Um, lots of conversation, like everyone really wants to get together with um, peers and counterparts at other companies to understand how they're tackling this. But I think the, that, you know, AI policy underscore final in capital letters dot PDF, you know, hasn't actually, hasn't actually come to fruition for a lot of companies. But um, I think 
where people are prioritizing their time is trying to get a lay of the land. So getting visibility into what's being, what is marketing using? What is HR using? What are developers using? And just kind of getting a benchmark for, for what's active in the environment right now. And then doing some risk assessment on, uh, okay, is that sanctioned? Is that not sanctioned? <laughs> is that uh, appropriate use? Just really doing more interviews and conversation within the organization. Uh, like I'd mentioned, to get the lay of the land and to get that initial benchmark. Um, that seems to be where a lot of the first activities, first steps are happening right now. So still very early days. The policies I've seen so far are mostly the block it all ones. They're the most sort of least or least nuanced ones, the, the most big hammer ones that these organizations are saying block all, you know, block all chat GPT. And they kind of ignore the realities that their business units may or may not be using it. Or they're so such a lockdown organization they wouldn't be allowing it anyway. So that's really simple, right? Thou shalt not use it. But the nuance of what if you're going to be using OpenAI, what can you use? What do we have for local instances? What about private use versus or the individual use versus the corporate licensing we're providing? Training data, uh, types of data we can put into it, not that's that's the stuff that's still in draft or people are still talking about. Yeah, my my personal stance is almost always to take a harm reduction approach. So we know user activity, we know people want to move fast. So let's let's build around this idea of, okay, we know it's going to be used. So how can we then meet people where they're at? So to your point, you brought up local. Like I think that this is such an incredible opportunity to for highly regulated, for federal agencies to have an opportunity to use the same benefits of the AI, but do it in a super secure way. Of course, that's that's maybe a little bit more niche and not something that every organization would need. So it's it's sort of like how how can we meet people where they're at so they can achieve their goals, um, whether that's local, whether that's in the cloud, whether that's an internal app or you know using um, you know external applications that we're purchasing as well. There's lots of options for people right now. Yeah, harm reduction. Like if you take healthcare analogies, or you know, the the do no harm is the Hippocratic oath. These are these are good things to use as uh, as philosophies because it's going to be there. Here you talked about those organizations that are super locked down. I've also heard from security. There's two types on the other side of the spectrum. It's either folks who uh, who are excited about it themselves. They're technologists. They really want to sink their teeth in and find a way to to make it work or there's a top-down directive. So I've talked to some security leaders where their executive team, their board have said, we're all in. It's like the same thing with cloud, right? We had organizations who said, we're cloud native, we're gonna be cloud first. It's almost the same trend with AI. So then the security leader uh, is then tasked with that, I don't wanna say burden, but with that responsibility, uh, that's maybe a little bit burdensome right out of the gate <laughs> because it, the change happened overnight. On one end of the spectrum, policy is pretty easy. It's one line. On the other end of the spectrum, you need to um, start doing some risk assessments. You need to uh, decide what data is permissible to be used. Um, you have to have a really tight-knit relationship with your development team, CTO, uh, technology leaders as well to really make it work. Yeah, and you've got to be educated about the technology. Unfortunately, this is a whole new area of security. We have to dive in with both feet now and be educated about it. If you're going to write policy about it, you can't do it from a place of uh, unknowledge or understanding the implications. Because the terminology alone is 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 awesome. Just the, the breadth of the lexicon right now and the how much technology is changing. So it's, it's a part-time job definitely right now, just even to understand this, to be able to write policy on it. Absolutely. Otherwise, you end up with what we talked about earlier, which is like a line that is like, uh, OK, our policy is that it will be secure, which is not going to cut it. Yeah. One interesting trend I've seen is in the fear of uh, regulation getting a little silly uh, is the voluntary code of conduct that have come out amongst technology providers. Uh, there's no reason that can't be done as well. If a vertical is having trouble with regulation, so the, the winds of regulation are blowing the wrong way to do that. So, for example, for um, we've seen it for cloud in the past, and now we're seeing it with AI, with a lot of the, the leading tech providers going to these voluntary code of conducts. As a way, it also sets a line and helps guide the regulations and saying, hey, you know, if we were to write the regulations, here's what we would do. And yes, we're not writing them, but here's some things that we think about that would help this. And obviously, it can't be modeled exactly or just copy pasted, but 
it kind of guides the the regulators who aren't both feed in the technology to understand things before they break it. That's a great point, actually. Like, I think that there really does need to be a little a little bit of a stronger mindset shift, I guess, from sort of this top down regulator to industry to more of like a partnership where uh, the regulators are learning from industry, industry is feeding the regulators, then industry learns from the regulation and it kind of goes around and around so that we get those revisions and uh, we get to a place that is actually implementable and is actually realistic and is actually secure. So, um I think that that will make a big difference, and that's a great way to start going about it. Yeah, I, I sit on a working group for AI for a, you know the federal government, and that's great in that form because it's half government, you know, half industry, and there's fantastic sharing. The one wrinkle we found though is that there's other parts of the government that are suddenly writing these regulations in competition, almost in competition with each mm. other, and you know you kind of come to an understanding with one part of the government, and another part of the government just is going off and in some other crazy direction or something that isn't it's the like, benef- beneficiary of these discussions. So uh, it's like, I've seen it's like I got there first, before. but it's like, yeah, but you did it wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we'll do complications after the regulations come out. <laughs> you do that. <laughs> so that was my concern about why I'm so skeptical as I'm seeing, because it's so topical. And I think within governments around the world, uh, this is a hot area that careers can be made in. So I'm getting really nervous about some of these regulations coming out quickly as a race to uh, coolness rather than a race to practicality. So speed is important. The AI train is off the station. but It uh, is off yeah. the station. And, and something else we, we need to be doing is we need to be more proactive in that sense as well. Like we, we are creating, you know, frameworks and policy for what exists today. Uh, we know that there's other risks for Like, for example, we've been spending a lot of time talking about agentic or agentive AI Um, We've been talking about things like rogue AI uh, risks. We need to be planning for those things as well as they're uh, as they're coming up, not not retroactively. (laughs) That's a great point. I think the work like you've done in deepfakes, for example, is a great analogy with that or part of the part of it, because, you know, deepfakes have been fairly, you know, static things that can't be timely. But now we're moving towards real time deepfakes. That's that's a whole different game if you can do that real time. So the regulations have to regulations, rules, and policies have to reflect the the future as well. Absolutely. Hey, so this is all great in theory, but if we're a security leader within an organization and we want to start having really material conversations with our peers, if we are ready to publish our AI policy, we're through the exploratory phase, we'd like to get something, uh, we'd like to get something out there that everyone's aligned on and following, how can we start Having those conversations, how can we get a seat at that table? Like, what are what is the path forward in your mind? I think number one is get educated. Next is get out the Inspector Clouseau outfit and go sniffing around your organization trying to find pockets of AI uh, to see what you're really doing or what the plans are. That's always great in security. Where the tech's headed, what's your roadmap, so you can plan for that. And then start talking to your peers more about this and say, hey, you know, Show me your policy. Well, I'll show you what we have right now. And they're both in draft, but you can move forward with that. So I think those are great steps. And start following uh, what's going on on the regulation side. Just start getting on the Googles and talking to your peers as well about where they think these things are headed. And even contact people who are in, involved in these initiatives. Just reach out to them and say, hey, you know, where's this headed? Um, you you be, may be surprised what answers you get. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's always really super helpful to broach these types of topics with your peers with some data in hand as well. You know, if you you start to do some of that research, you're poking around with different, different department heads, different groups, say, what are you working on? You can actually see that visibility as well, maybe through some of the tools that you're using. Um, you can see what, what groups are using Uh, what types of applications, that's really helpful to understand because honestly, sometimes even the department leaders might not know what their teams are using in full, right? Because we had Shadow IT, then Shadow Cloud, we totally have Shadow AI. So if you can come to the table and bring some of that visibility, I think that that's really helpful and that's a really soft landing um, to start having those types of conversations as well. And there you have it, folks. That wraps it up. I hope you enjoy these insights and the latest on AI and compliance and what it really means to Caesars today. Be sure to subscribe and check out the, our AI Pulse. That's our monthly blog series on the latest AI threats, innovations, and what's around the corner, especially on the defender side too. That's probably the least talked about, but most exciting part. But we're going to talk about all of it. So thanks for joining us today and look forward to speaking with you again soon. Thanks. Bye.